There's the right button. Hi, everybody. Rick DiClemente. Welcome to Astrology Unplugged. We've got a bunch of people tonight. It's going to be a uh, mouthful, I tell you that, because all the planets are moving. Did you notice that? They've been very frustrated, and they haven't been moving on, Linda. Anytime, if you hear me talk and you see Linda going like this, you know it's right. Okay, because <laughs> Linda's very good. And all of a sudden, all of these sudden, these frustrating planets have started to move forward. They're moving forward. That means things are happening. Okay? No, I noticed it in the past week. And they're not just moving forward. They're moving forward. Okay, so all kind of things are going to happen. We just went through a very unusual period of a bunch of retrograde planets, a bunch of planets in the doldrums. Nothing was happening. People were looking at each other saying, what's going on? Well, here they go. And tonight is about uh, the month of March, largely, about all the planets moving forward in the month of March and the, the ramifications of that. And it's a mouthful. And as I just said to the early comers, I just did some charts this week and I just went. So you guys think that, we'll tune in to Rick. He can re read anything. It was, I've had a couple of this week that were really, really tough. I had this one lady, I just, I did what I could and I said, that's just all I got for you. And that's it. We're going to let it be there. Go make stuff up. They're going to know it anyway. Anyhow, welcome aboard. Tonight we're going to be talking largely about Pluto's change after all these years out of Capricorn and into Aquarius in a couple, in about three weeks. And next week we're looking at Saturn. Saturn coming out of Aquarius going into Pisces. Okay. We're going to look at the USA's chart. And you're seeing it everywhere across the web. And that's why I did that article. I, that, I did that session two, three weeks ago. That Pluto going into Aquarius. Pluto going into the sign of Aquarius is not the same as the age of Aquarius. And already I see people that are confused about it, okay? Remember, Pluto is shifting signs. It spends anywhere from 13 to 30 years in a sign. Well, it's been in Capricorn since 08, and it's moving out in a couple of weeks. Then it's going to go and mess around the early degrees of... Um, of Aquarius, and it's going to go back into Capricorn. Just to remind us, then it'll go back into Aquarius for good. That's the different. That's different than the age of. Okay, we don't know when the age of Aquarius starts. Nobody knows. We we think it's around now. We have good reason to believe it's around now, but it's not distinctly clear. Okay, so what we're looking at is we're looking at a chart. I'm going to show you. Okay, we're going to use several different charts tonight that may be a little unusual to you. These are the transits at the moment. Okay, now I changed this chart because I'm not used to showing you the signs of the zodiac around the outside. That's inferred when I show you my charts. But I thought for tonight's purposes, this would be very good. And in solar fire, you just go over here where it says wheel style. And you have hundreds of different wheels available to you. So you can pick the one that you like best. This is a European number four. And I like it because it shows you the houses. Here's your houses. Here's the house numbers. And it shows you the signs also. So since tonight is specific about the signs, we're going to use this one. So, it was 
a Friday night at 9.30. It was, the, it was January 25th. It was 2008. And I was, I was teaching a workshop on this. And all of a sudden, Pluto went into Capricorn at 9.30, 9.30 at night. And I turned to a Capricorn lady and I said, I can't remember what I said, poor woman. I just said, you're in the wrong job. <laughs> Talk about Pluto taking over, man. And she was. And we didn't know it for years, but we did find out for years later. Pluto, she was in the wrong job. She wasn't honoring her abilities. We found out a couple of years later, once she shifted into spiritual work, that she was now in the right job. And the day that Pluto went into Capricorn, 9.30 at night, the day, the morning of, before it got there, a lady calls me and she's a grandma and the, and the, the mother of her grandkids won't let her see her kids because grandma thinks she's taking them through Satanism. <laughs> so she's not allowed to see her grandkids. So that was how I started that period. So anyhow, uh, years later, she still hasn't seen her grandkids. So it's not good. Mm. When the planets change signs, heavy duty things happen. Whether they're going forward, whether they're going backward, when they're going forward, they're called the ingress. They ingress into the next sign. The last degree of the sign, the first degree of the sign is called the anoretic degree. They're very important. They're very sensitive. When a planet changes signs, it you got a picture. I was talking to Eliza last night. Your chart is a single vibrating, something, breathing, living entity. And I got a big head shake going on from, from Linda. When you get the big head shake, you got it. Okay? Let me see if I can explain this to you. I was trying to explain to myself, and I got it to explain it to Eliza, that your chart is a singularity. Because people were trying to tell me with the harmonics that Saturn can't be in a sign. Saturn can't be in a house. Sad Mars can't be in a house square to another planet in another sign because the house system is different. And I said, no. And I finally figured out, no, my favorite new gesture. No. <laughs> it can be because it is. And if you go research it, you'll find out it is. And I found out why. And the reason why is your whole sign, your whole chart is a map of you. You cannot just go apply the harmonic to just the planetary placements. You got to apply it to the whole chart. And that's why it works. Plus, if you bother looking, you can see that it works. Okay? So there. <laughs> so anyhow, Because the zodiac, let me let me show you this other uh, popular one that we use in this class. Popular graphic that we use. My teaching graphic is this one. And it's the one I use in the book, The Exquisite Zodiac. This is a very important graphic. It really is important that you understand this. Now, When you're looking at the zodiac, the zodiac is symbolic of a cosmic man, like a man who's a meta man. He's not a human, but he's the soul of mankind itself. And that's why we divide this zodiac up into substantive parts, developmental parts, relationship parts, and worldly parts. And you'll notice that in the zodiac, the last three signs are Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. These are known as the world and beyond. 
the world and beyond. And when you study these signs, you're studying relationships between signs. Okay? And Linda's going to take my picture. Okay. So, um, when when Pluto went into Capricorn, it entered the world and beyond sector. So, it doesn't mean Sages aren't interested in the world. It doesn't mean Leos aren't interested in the world. It just means that the basic sign at its core is about itself largely. So when you get to the last three, the last three are really a lot about the world, me plus the world plus bigger. Okay, so when we had the picnic of 1995, through 2008, 1995, 2008, Pluto was crawling through Sagittarius, and it was largely a picnic. Why was it a picnic? Things weren't always hunky-dory, but what was going on in everybody's mailbox? Oh, Everywhere. Cards. Credit cards. Credit card, credit card, credit card. Remember? Credit card, they're falling out of your mailbox. Credit card, credit card, credit card. Borrow, borrow from the future. Don't worry about it. Just borrow from the future. Don't worry about it. There'll be money all the time. Don't worry about it. 1995 to 2008. Then the picnic ended. January 25th, 2008. The party was over and the bills came due. Like that. It was so distinct that even in December and November of 07, the bills came due and the banks started crashing. Okay? That was why. All right. So when you're looking at the zodiac, you have to treat the zodiac as if it's one thing at the same time you study the pieces. This word exquisite in our title was chosen very carefully. Because it really is an exquisite entity when you study it and you just see it's self-referential. It's unbelievable. So anyhow, Pluto entered into Capricorn in late January 2008. It's been in there all that time, 15 years. Another couple of weeks around the 23rd of this month, two days after spring, it's going to go out of Capricorn and go into Aquarius and all of us Capricorns can go ah for <laughs> once because Capricorns don't get many breaks ah Marcia <laughs> <laughs> okay so it's not going to be a picnic and a lot of people are writing about it when Pluto goes into when it leaves Capricorn that everything's going to get light and rosy once again it's not going to happen. No. So you have to study now. And this is why it's so important when you're studying astrology to really understand the nature of Capricorn, the nature of Aquarius, the nature of Gemini. You have to understand all 12. You just have to. You can't. A lot of people try to just study their sun sign. Ain't going to work. So now... Since it's moving from Capricorn into Aquarius, the global person, the American person, the American soul, the global soul is going to start to feel in the psyche the Capricorn part of itself lessen up and the Aquarian part gets stronger. So what's the difference between a Capricorn and an Aquarian? They're both the 10th and 11th signs of the zodiac. The Capricorn is very symbolic of the completed citizen. He's standing up in the world. Um, he's got his job. He's got his career. He's very much thinking about what happens to people uh, in the country. When it goes into Aquarius, it becomes more of the humanity of. It's not the job of. The Aquarius is more the humanity of the whole group. Okay, Capricorn is not a really humane sign. It, it's careful to help 
and tried to construct a good society, but has not got the thoughts like Sagittarius does or Cap or Aquarius does in terms of thinking about humanity itself. So it's going to be different, but it's also going to be similar. And one of the reasons why is this. You may have wondered yourself. Um, um, okay. In the old days, before there were Uranus and Sat Uranus and Neptune and Pluto, we didn't have enough planets to assign rulership on each sign. So for whatever reason, Capricorn was ruled by Saturn, and so was Aquarius. And then in the 1700s, when Uranus was discovered, it was obvious by discovering Uranus's nature that we were going to assign Uranus to Aquarius and Saturn to Capricorn. But what did they do? They left them both here. They left Aquarius being co-ruled by Saturn and co-ruled by Uranus. I don't know why in the international committee that does these things has their reasons. But when you study astrology, you will see when you... Hold on one moment, please. So the point of this is, yes, Aquarius is different than Capricorn, but it's also got a similarity since they're both co-ruled by Saturn. You will see it when you go about your daily affairs and you're walking around through the world and you're meeting these different signs. I'm sure you're all doing it, finding out people's sun signs and starting to apply these different principles. You will see that there are Aquarians who are very Uranus-like and there are other Aquarians who are very Saturnian. Hmm. I don't know why that is, but it is the truth. Now, you have to dig deep because Aquarius is a firm, strong, somewhat rigid, hard-headed sign, which can be applied to Saturn. Also, since it's a fixed sign and it's an air sign, fixed mind, hard-headed, you can apply there. So it's not simple. It's not like when we went into Sag into Capricorn. That was drastic difference. We were lighthearted, Jupiter ruled Sag. We went into Capricorn, stern, tough. This is not like that. This is a tough sign going to, into another tough sign. But what does it, what, what is, what is, what is Aquarius famous for? It's famous for being aloof. Hmm. Why, why is that? Why is it? Famous for being aloof. Okay. Well, it's got to do with the very nature of Uranus. And the, the reason why is Aquarius is about the high dimension of mind. I told you that when you're with a Virgo, they want to fix things. When you're with a Capricorn, they want to make sure of things. Most signs have a real obsession with one thing. Aquarius is obsessed with putting the big mental picture together. Every Aquarian you talk to is busy putting the big mental puzzle together. That's what they do. They're really good at it. They're great accountants. They're great researchers. And you can talk to them whatever you want about their expertise, but they're putting the big mental picture together. That's what they're doing. When you do that, you're naturally aloof. Because you're constantly referring to this dimension of mind that is so high. It's not the Pisces dimension. That's the last one. The Pisces dimension is beyond the mind. It's the heart. It's the big ocean of love. It's the big ocean of feeling. So that's one reason that Aquarians can be aloof. Now, 
it's very, very common. And the more you know about Aquarius, the better off you're going to be. I would, I would urge all of you to get your books back out and read the Aquarian chapter once again, even though it's Pluto going into Aquarius. Because Pluto, uh, Aquarian people are very what? They're really friendly. They're real thing, too. They're really good people, usually. They're very idealistic. And they're very heavily into the environment. Those four things are really strong and true. Once in a while, you'll see one that's very cold and they don't have any love in their chart, never any love in their upbringing. And they can be really kind of dangerous people once in a while. But most of them are not that way. They're usually really great, good, good people. Very highly uh, principled. Okay. So when Pluto goes into Aquarius, it's going to be into the next 20 years. It's going to go and come back out, say 20 years. It's going to be similar to Pluto has been in Capricorn, but yet it's going to be different. So we want to point out those two different things. When we go to um, the Zodiac once again, we see that the Zodiac is wrapping up in these last couple of signs. And it has to all go through the final filter, the 12th stage, which is the non-self, which is the self-giving up, which is no ambition, which is the complete opposite of Aries. And the soul is emptying itself out to become reborn again on a blank slate right here in the first sign of Aries. So you, the soul is rising till it gets to the top of the mountain. Why else you think you got a mountain goat that's put at the top of the mountain? You'll see zodiacs all the time in jewelry and in pictures and stuff. And they got Aries at the top or they got Sag down here at the bottom. They're all wrong. This is how the zodiac is drawn. The mountain goat is supposed to be at the top because he's symbolic of mankind trying to achieve the top. And who who was the famous, famous uh, person who got to the very top and exemplified this sign and started beating his chest? But Muhammad Ali, the Capricorn. That was very symbolic of Capricorn rising to its rightful position, only to be fooled by the fact that there are two more signs he's got to learn which it, it has chagrin on its face, and it starts to learn about the humanity of the Aquarius sign, etc. So we have to ask ourselves, what's the difference between Aquarian and a, and a Capricorn? Okay, first of all, when you get to the 10th stage of Capricorn, you have busted your butt to get yourself that high. And this is why when you talk reasonably about the Zodiac, most of the heavyweight stuff gets dumped on Capricorn. It just does. This is the sign of duty and responsibility. All Capricorns have the sense of duty and responsibility. Not some of them. They all got it. Duty and responsibility. Doesn't mean other signs don't, but this sign is near 100%. When you get into... Aquarius, Aquarius has found out something critical. It's found out that going through the 10th stage, the soul has given up something priceless, and that is the individual self. The Capricorn has forfeited their individual self in order to attain this state, and Aquarius is real upset about it. And that's why Aquarius is so hung up on gathering the self and the rights of the self and the rights of the individual. And when you get to Aquarius, you're talking about individual individuals. These people are unique people. That's because Aquarius has recovered that sense of self, that special oneness, that unique self that uh, Fred Rogers talks about. A lot of Capricorns. You go about and study. Be neutral. Go out and study. You will see a lot of Capricorns who've given up their self to attain this position. 
and it hurts them. And a lot of Capricorns suffer greatly because of this. There's no doubt about it. Many of them make it through. A lot of them don't. A lot of them don't. So once again, the Capricorn is yearning to get to the top of the mountain. He gets there, but in so doing, and having its mind on everybody else, has forfeited thoughts of itself, which is recovered in the sign of Aquarius. So you're going to see, before we go into Aquarius, a lot of people, you're going to see a lot of articles like this. What happened to us when Pluto was going through Capricorn? What did you guys see? 08, 09, 010, et cetera, et cetera. We saw what Capricorn rules falling down and Capricorn rules institutions. Banks, things held up with pillars, football teams, baseball teams, education, the military, the government. We saw so many institutions crumbling. Why? You think it's because Pluto went in and said, well, here's a bunch of stuff that everybody hasn't, hasn't crumbled yet. Let's crumble it. No, why? Pluto went into Capricorn and found that the strength was not there. The reality was not there. The strength to hold up those pillars was not there. The strength to hold up that sign on the Statue of Liberty that said, bring me your poor and your lonely and your sick, found out the Americans felt like, oh, we didn't really mean that. We didn't really mean that. I mean, look what they're doing to our country. Let's go, let's go save our borders. We didn't talk about our borders when Pluto was pre-Capricorn. We talked about it then when we started to feel the individual threat. So we weren't as tough as we thought. We're a cancer country. Capricorns are a very important sign in our chart. And not just us, happened across the world. Pluto went into Capricorn. Remember, the planet went into the sign of Capricorn for the whole planet. And we saw a lot of businesses collapse, careers collapse, institutions collapse, phony belief in institutions collapsing. Okay. All right. That's why I kept saying to you, you know, that's why I said, I stopped writing for OM Times Magazine. I noticed tonight my article's back up and running again. So I got a new, brand new article on that site. Because those last three years or so, last four years, I got so tired of writing about Pluto bringing down institutions in the sign of Capricorn, I just didn't want to talk about it anymore. And I'm sure people were tired of hearing about it. Now that it's gone into Aquarius, there's a hopefulness to it. Because Aquarius is a very positive sign. It's a very strong sign. Now, when you ask yourself, what, what, does, what does Aquarius rule? It's not an easy question like with Capricorn. Capricorn is the pinnacle of social structures. Aquarius is the mind of the country, the intellect of the country, the science of the country. You're going to see the next 20 years phenomenal advancements with science, with nanotechnology. You're going to see phenomenal growth with things that are aquarium, 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 quantum mechanics, holograms. These things are going to go sky high. Remember, Pluto's 250 years or so, 250, 245 years around. It's been a long time since it's been there. So we're going to see a lot of revolution taking place there. Speaking of, Pluto, Aquarius is the sign of revolution. Capricorn's a sign of the opposite institution. Let's come together. Aquarius is revolution. Why? 
if you're not careful, it can be like James Dean. It can be a rebel without a cause. If you are careful, you you are a rebel, but you have a cause. So don't you see that amongst you right now? You see all kind of people that are rebelling and they don't really have a cause that's really real and other people really do. Now, it's no coincidence that at the same time this is happening, Eris is found. 2005, 2006. It's no coincidence. But it's kind of heartbreaking to think that somebody thinks that we can handle all this at the same time. And that's why I kept saying, with the discovery of Eris, that's why I kept saying to people, do you know how sick the patient is on the gurney? Look how sick he is. Look how many operations the U.S. body is going through. 08, 09, 010, 11. Look how many operations at once. How much can it take? How much can it take? We keep saying, oh, we got to fix this. We found corruption here. We found corruption here. We found pus there. We found pus there. Well, how much can it take? It's not a stupid thing to say. And what we're finding out is at least now we're getting a little break. We don't even know what it means, but we're getting a little break. But if you're naive enough to think that Pluto leaving Capricorn is going to be soft and the underbelly of a, a puppy, it's not going to be. Now, what is it going to be? What did we learn by watching Pluto go through Capricorn? We learned that we cannot rest on our institutions mainly because they became corrupt. We found out that we need a Declaration of Independence 2.0. We need a Constitution 2.0 because the myriad of lawyers, Mr. John, found 75,000 loopholes in the first one. And that's why the ship is sinking. Do you think that's easy to write a new Constitution 2.0? Hell no. Big deal, big job. It needs to happen. How can it happen if the United States has planets that are baby planets? The United States chart does not have advanced placements of its planets. It has a lot of planets in Aries and in Taurus and early parts of the Zodiac. It can't handle it. So what do we do? Very, very tough questions. The number one thing that we have to do, we have to start taking it upon ourselves individually to cure the problems. Number one, you've heard that how much in this show? You've heard it over and over and over. And you're blessed people. A lot of you are out there doing what you can. And you're, you're doing your own different things to help out with grassroots campaigns. And you're starting to see it. And when you saw these things starting to rebound, what did you see when you started to see the U.S. rebound the last couple of years? You found no institutions that were available to them to help work with this. There was nothing there. There were no heroes. There was nobody to follow. There was nobody to uh, copy after. They were gone. They'd been destroyed. Gone. Kaput. That's what Pluto does. So now it's time for us. We've got the heroes there. We've got the people there. We've got the brilliance there. We've got the institutions there. It's time to start repairing them. So we need to start repairing all these institutions. And how are you going to do that when big money still runs everything? That's the question I have. How are you going to do it? Be honest now. When big bucks still calls the shots. Ain't easy, is it? Inserting those new rules into the new constitution. Ain't easy, is it? We can we can be pretty honest and say the Biden the Biden uh, presidency has been I would think quite healthier than the one before it. I don't think that's a stretch. Thank goodness. 
him being a Pluto Scorpio. But now when we move into Aquarius, the strength of Aquarius is, I want to buy the world a coat and sing in harmony. That's what it is. That's what Aquarius is. Working together, we are a powerhouse. Without it, we're really in trouble. Without even talking about the 12th stage, which is 20 years from now, when we go into Pisces and start look, looking to our spiritual guides for our strength, that's where the focus is going to go now. And when you put the focus on the individual, you can't fake it. You cannot fake Pluto. Have you ever had a Scorpio rule by Pluto? Have you ever had a Scorpio look through you? It's because they are. They're looking through you. Why? Because they want to see what's there. And they can tell what's there. You can't fake it. They want to see if you're real. If you're not real, Pluto just puts a big X through you. You ever been around a Scorpio that doesn't like you? <clears throat> you can feel the X being drawn across you. <laughs> and Linda Sprague is hiding and hiding her lips up there being one. She's hiding. Thank God we got it, because you got to have a sign in the Zodiac that takes no more BS. And that's Pluto. So the answer to this quagmire of discussion so far is we're going to start to rebuild the banks and start to rebuild the... Look at the laughing stock, my dear friends. Look at the laughing stock called the Congress. Look at what the... I, I, I made a motion years ago that we stop paying their light bill. Well, they're not doing anything. I'm not trying to be an idiot and rabble rouser. What are they doing? What do they get done? Except fighting each other. So something has got to start to rebirth us, some spirit. And that spirit now is largely going to activate that part of us in our psyche that's Aquarian. And as Pluto goes into Aquarius, he comes back into Capricorn and goes back and forth. We're going to start to see so many discussions about grassroots campaigns and about you standing up for yourself. And we're going to see so many stories about you think the individual can't do something. We're going to see all these great stories about the individual doing all this stuff, such as fanatical Rick on his show. I don't know why I'm doing his show. I don't know why. Six years, I'm just telling you what the planets say. And I, I'm urging you, from what I can see, the patient is sick. He's really sick. And we need to help him heal. And we've got so many great people. You know, it's just mind-boggling how many great teams we have and, and great scientists and great students. I mean, it's just wonderful. But the problem is we got to find the perennial way. We got to find the way, Dr. John, to kick these dudes out, with these dudesses. We got to find the way to kick these rich ones out that just like Bernie talks about is destroying our country, has destroyed our country. And I told you that these rich ones are chiseling into the mountainsides in New Zealand to build safety zones. They're chiseling into the mountains there. So everybody else is going to die from nuclear weapons, but they're going to be living into these retreats inside these bunkers inside the hills of New Zealand. And they're throwing the millionaires out. Now the millionaires can't get a place, only the billionaires. It's just so comical. That's why I've been talking stupid talk recently, and I don't care about the UFOs being here, because I think they are here. 
And thank God they're here. And we need help. We need help from a spiritual help, from a UFO help, from other countries' help, whatever it is. We need help. And the thing that the thing that stuns me the most about America is this. Look how long we let South America just turn to mush. For nothing. For what? All those years, all that potential, all that land, all those people, all those crops, we could have been helping these people stand up for themselves and devise a win-win situation. But we didn't. And if you've ever read, read the book, um, An Economic Hitman, He'll tell you what he did, how he was hired to go into South America and has into South America and dismantle their governments to take over their economy. John Perkins, the economic hitman, phenomenal book. He'll tell you how he did it. Instead, we could have gone in and helped them. It would have helped us, etc. Now here we stand. Now here we stand. Russia's threatening us, China's threatening us, Korea's threatening us, the rest of the countries are all looking to America. America's looking back at them saying, you have to help out. We can't do it all. So since we do it all for everybody, we're the one country that has no health insurance. Because we're paying for their jets too. Okay, so <clears throat> when you look at Aquarius, it's a very difficult, sign to talk about even even the sun sign is hard because it's so cerebral but what you're going to start to see in the next 20 years is our assets are going to go towards this our assets are going to go towards smarter students bigger robots better robots we don't kid yourself we're going to look to AI for everything we're just going to. Aquarius is obsessed with AI. And that's going to be our answer. That's going to be our answer. And other than that, we're going to have to start saying no to more technology. No, you can't bring your smartphone with you during your exam. No, take your pencil, figure it out. We need stronger people. So that's the real, real story of what's going on with Pluto in Aquarius. Now, that's the 23rd of this month, and that's just part of what's going on. Okay, that's the big one. On the 8th, which is a week from now, right? Saturn goes into, Saturn comes out of Aquarius. Saturn comes, Saturn comes out of Aquarius and goes into Pisces. Saturn goes out of Pike and Clarice into Pisces. Saturn stays in a sign 28 months. This is why you have to know these speeds. Ain't that right, Elky? She said yes. <laughs> yes, that is right. By God. I wonder why my left eye's been bothering me. I told you the moon in a man's chart is the left eye, and my moon is in. Early Pisces, sitting right here. And here comes Saturn, right over. It's at 29 degrees right now. Okay. Saturn's going to go into Pisces. Saturn has spent quietly two and a half years in the sign of Aquarius. Saturn is very clockwork-like. It's always 28 months. Okay? 28 years around. Two years plus four months. Now, if you're starting a relationship, or you're starting a business, et cetera, et cetera, don't be surprised if it stops at 28 months. Storm warnings to sign off quickly. That's why we're under storm warnings. Tell me what you mean there. I got you. You're un you're unmuted. I just hi. I just wanted you to know if I disappear, it's oh. Because you mean a real one? Big, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yesterday we had tornado. Go on the base. So. 
Yeah, <laughs> we don't have basements. <laughs> you don't. Linda, anyway. I don't know where you go. Be safe, but please come back to us. Oh, yeah. I, I'm okay. not leaving yet. I'm just saying oh. if, right. if it gets worse, I may have to oh, go. When you're in my seat, anything could happen on the screen. Let me tell you. I hear the craziest stuff you wouldn't believe. Uh, we love having you. We don't want you to go away. Okay. Um, I wanted to take a moment since I didn't do it earlier. I want to do it now because I wanted to start the show with this. I want to start, uh, get back to this. Then we'll go more into Saturn and Pisces. Okay. I want to apologize to people because I'm doing what I can. I had a gentleman today, really, really pleasant guy. And he, his only fault was he worked too hard. And he had a wife that she really didn't want to be a wife. And the way that I'm apologizing, I really want to apologize to people in general. If you think you're going to come to an astrologer and hear what you want to hear, then we are sorry. It is not our job to tell you what you want to hear. I asked this woman about trouble in the country getting near the edge. She didn't see anything. Climate, nothing. No problems anywhere. So my point is, the fact that that woman's talking to me, he's doing okay. She's not doing okay. She's got her head in the sand. That means the fact that I'm talking to her means that her chart's under fire right now. Then I, then I went and looked of course it was. I am sorry if your chart is under fire. If I could do something for you, I would. But the reason your chart's under fire is not because the planets are mean and out to get you. The reason your chart is under fire is your insights are tired of trying to tell you. That's what's happening. Your insides are trying to tell you. They're saying, I'm providing the thrust. I'm, pro I'm summoning the strength. I'm bringing you the insight. I'm bringing you the balls to do it. And I can't help you do it. I'm bringing it to you. You got to do something. And so many of us, in the name of security, in the name of safety, we're ignoring ourselves. We're ignoring our self-evolution because of this. So that's who the apology goes out to tonight, to the people who want me to save them. And I can't. And no astrologer can. And it's not right to ask us. And it's sad because we should have been brought up better to understand this. So hopefully that's another thing that's going to change during the age of Aquarius. We're going to start to learn that it's up to the individual to maintain these parts, to grow these parts, you know, to, to hold up your end of the psyche. Okay, so when you see Saturn going into Pisces, it'll go back and forth and back and forth for 20 Eight, 28 months. Well, what I was saying to you, if you have a relationship or you have a business and it just so happens to die at 28 months, don't be shocked. It's very common. Very common that 28 months is that limit. Doesn't mean it's going to, but it's very common. Now, what is Saturn doing? You see, when you get to the outer planets, such as Saturn in Pisces or Uranus in Aquarius, it's very confusing how to translate these things. It's not like translating Mars in Taurus or Venus in Libra. The outer planets are double-twisted confusing. Well, you've got this Saturn planet that's about con congealing bringing things together, and here it is in the sign of quicksand. So I'm sure we got Claudia down there going, mm, I don't know. Well, what do you think all astrologers have done in, since the beginning of time? We all go, I don't know. What do you think people have in their chart when their sun is in between Saturn and Neptune? I had a woman today 
I was telling you about. Bye. Whatever. Woman today, her problem was Saturn and Neptune. What's that mean? That means she believes in spirit. No, she doesn't. She believes it. No, she doesn't. She believes in it. Not until she sees it. Not until she tastes it. Well, we cannot settle her spiritual crisis. She's got to settle it. It's unfortunate that maybe she was told the wrong stuff, the wrong kind of uh, spiritual dogma. But there was a problem in the chart. You believe or you don't. I can't come fix it. A priest can't come fix it. You got to fix it. Do you believe that God's got your back or don't you? Through my years on this show, that's what I've tried to do is boil everything down to the real question. Do you believe he's got your back or he doesn't? That's what Saturn and Pisces is about. Now, you, what do you think you're going to see with churches? Pisces rules things like chemicals, things that are ethereal, things that are so-called spiritual, things that are churches. What do you think is going to start happening? What do you think is going to happen with the fact that... Um, what's the guy's name? Joe Osteen. What do you think is going to happen with Joe Osteen? Just got the news given given out. The news was released that he pays himself $57 million per year. $57 million. What do you think is going to happen with that? The churches are going to start falling apart. Why they've been falling apart because of the Pluto Capricorn, they're going to continue because the wrong part of the church has been trying to hold up the church. And the wrong part of the church is, I'm on the right team, you're on the wrong team. Uh, that's the wrong part of the church. The right part of the church is us coming together. Comradeship, right? Um, fellowship. Loving each other, helping each other. But it's not there to hide from God. I try not to get too evangelistic. It's not there to hide from him. It's to merge with him. If I could use the word him without getting dirty letters. Him. So Saturn in Pisces is going to have a lot to do with destroying and rebuilding the church. It's just going to, because it can't stand it anymore. It's just not real. The Zodiac and Pluto, especially. Pluto, we, we should all have bumper stickers. Pluto only, only supports what's real. It only supports what's real. Try to pass some BS principle, some BS idea past Scorpio tonight. It ain't going anywhere. They just see right through it. They want to know what's real. So, and the good part of it is there's a real good chance, especially in Aquarius. I mean, what do you think started uh, these churches called the United, United Churches, whatever they're called? That's all an Aquarian principle. It's an Aquarian principle. Get away from the dogma. Get away from the Old Testament. Let's make the Church of United Brotherhood. That's Aquarian. That's Aquarian. That's what we're going to see more of. Because it's based on um, Unitarian. Yes, Erica. I always have trouble with... I don't even know what word I use, but thank you. Erica has to always save me. I get the wrong word. Yeah. Yeah, Unitarian. Unitarian, based on the word un unity. That's exactly right. We're going to see more and more Unitarian efforts. Unity or united life, exactly. All the same concept. And right now you're seeing the Baptist church is running for the hills now in the South. It's starting to fall apart. Because it's old rules and it's old fears are not working to keep you behaving. And then we're, that we're evolving. We're evolving. 
to a truer perception of what we think Jesus really meant. And Moses and the other saints and the other greats, Yogananda, let's all work together. So you're going to see tremendous efforts going on there. Now, you're also going to get the complexity. And there's no way to do this when you get complexity. You're going to get the complexity. There's nothing you can do about trying to mix something solid with something that's airy. How are you going to mix Saturn and Pisces? How? With what? Who's doing the stirring here? What's it stirring? One's matter, one's non-matter. So this is where the astrologers have to really bend their minds and think conceptually. This is why it's so important as an astrologer that you think on the archetypal level. You're also going to see the problems with it. You're going to see funny money. You're going to see bib you're going to see churches struggling like crazy to keep tax free. You're going to see people like crazy trying to bill them. You're going to see all this going on because a lot of people getting rich. And the churches are about everybody getting rich, right? Rich in spirit. So there's a lot of damn work to do. How sick is the client? There's a lot of work to do. Now, Pisces rules a lot of things, gases, uh, liquids, gas spills, liquid spills. Saturn is always about stopping it, containing it. So you will see laws trying to contain the oil spills before they happen. You'll try to see new restrictions. That's Saturn coming in to that field. You'll see, you're going to try to see um, Saturn trying to restrict the, um, the loose flow of money to these millionaires running these churches. But you see, none of this can happen as long as I'm in the right church and you're in the wrong one. Just can't do it. I'm in the right club, son of a gun, and you're in the wrong one. And that's what most of us have, spiritual discipline. Yes, Rachel. Exactly. We're all in the same club. I mean, if Jesus came down right now, tonight, and tried to teach us about 101, love each other, we're not going to get it. <laughs> How long we've been trying. So hopefully we can start turning it around. That's the advantage of the Aquarian age. We're getting a dose of Aquarius and a dose of Pisces at the same time. This is powerful stuff. And it's going to enter the psyche. You can see it. You can see it's been affecting the psyche the last two years already. When you look at the psyche that's going around Iran and Korea and Europe, you can see the psyche is changing. The psyche is changing because we're, we're getting more attuned to the sense of oneness in the mind. Linda Sprague, will Saturn... Let me see if I can get that question. Uh, for you who um, are on YouTube, the questions come up on my screen. You can't see them. Will Saturn and Pisces blow the whistle on conspiracy theories? Well, great question. The answer is yes and no. The answer is yes, but the answer is no, depending on how strong those holes are in the mountains. How much can they go back in their hole in the mountain and, and govern the world from there? How much can they do it? Really do it? Or just talk about doing it? How much? We don't know. I think a UFO could help us. Yeah, probably in a lot of ways. 
the heart is there, Linda. The heart is there to do this. And this is why so many people are chirping from the grassroots level. They're chirping from the grassroots level. Look at look at how honorable uh, what Ukraine's been trying to do. The president told him, I don't want my picture on your wall. I'm not an idol. I'm just a Ukrainian. You see Trump doing that? Did you want this side or did you want that side? So, another thing that's happening, and you won't hear this talked about, but you will if you're thinking, the Zodiac is one entity. We're getting ready for Pisces. We're getting ready to go into the sign of Pisces. In the scheme of things, 250 years for Pluto is nothing. 20 years for Pluto going through Aquarius is nothing. It's getting ready to go into Pisces. And if you look back in time, what do you see the last time Pluto went through Pisces? Oh, that would have been about 1800. Around the year 1800. So again, it comes down to, are we going to work together? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, compact our energies together. Work together, not just uh, work individually. So I think what we'll do now is we'll open the phones and we're going to try to cheer up Leanne in Pittsburgh somewhere. <laughs> oh, these Leos, they don't like hearing these depressing stories. <laughs> Let's hear from cohesion. That's exactly the word. Elky. And you guys are just really good with these words. Synergy. They're all just right. It's like playing a game here. Okay. Unmute yourself. Ask questions. Make the points that you want to. I'm not going to talk about other things except to say to you, near the end of this month, there's going to be a whole lot of planets in Aries. And if you're going to dare have a baby at the end of this month, good luck. If you're going to have somebody with like six planets in Aries. Whoo! So you ladies may want to think about that some if you can do anything about it. What do you have to say? What are your questions? What are your comments? Come on. Don't make Uncle Rick do everything. I'm wondering what this is going to do to our uh, our water. Very good question. Yes. Yeah. Source of life, right? Yeah. And Saturn that's a big and, deal. Saturn and Pisces. Yeah. Saturn's going to try to solve it in Pisces. Saturn makes work. Pisces is the ocean, the water. Yeah. Yeah. I've been that's a really good that. question. Yeah. What do you see happening? I think... I think we're going to see more problems with water, but it's going to be towards, I think the transit is going to call for those problems to be solved and crack down on what municipalities and what cities are doing and what we're doing to the oceans and that kind of thing. The question that arises in my mind if if that's the case, then why does it take, take so long for anybody to do anything in Detroit? Yeah. The answer is always big money. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what it comes down to. It's don't you think? Yeah. Well, I think I think that you're right. And I I, I really hope that we can. The answer we need is legislative. We got to find ways that these people can't slip through these loopholes anymore. Mm -hmm. And for that, we turn to John because John's got the <laughs> John has the answers. Anything legislative, <laughs> look at him going like this. <laughs> John's got the answers to any problem is legislative because he's going to go and fix that right up. <laughs> 
Well, I just a uh, real quick. I was looking at the rulership book while you were talking. Yeah. And you you all may know this, um, but Aquarius rules Congress and the House of Representatives. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm going to do. I decided. I told Liz I'm going to do a week soon on this show about how the GOP destroyed itself. How I warned you in 08 and how it destroyed itself. And I'm going to tell mm -hmm. you exactly why. Before I forget, next week, my good friend Clarissa Berkman will be with me. And we're going to talk about the myth of the New Age movement. And that's going to be about Join yeah. New Age movements where you follow the rules and nothing happens, or New Age movements and you're doing this and doing that and things are getting better. But the pros and the cons, I didn't even get my ephemeris out today. The pros and the cons, what's it called, boy? Of spiritual bypassing. Mm. The, the problem with spiritual bypassing, which means I'm going to feel spiritual today. I'm going to take my family. We're going to the New Age bookstore, and I'm going to buy a nice crystal. Did you plan that to, to be at the beginning of Saturn and Pisces? <laughs> uh, no. We, we thought of this weeks weeks ago. But it's going to be what Ramdas calls spiritual materialism you know you're going through the motions but is it real so we're going to talk about it and i really like this subject because the more i've been working with this what i really like about this sean is that uh i'm seeing a lot of hope in the area of things are becoming easier we're not going through the BS rules anymore. We don't have to go through all these right motions and say nine novenas and all this stuff. And we're we're going through the right heart, the right intent. And we're seeing that with all the spiritual people. We saw we saw we saw for years uh massage. We saw physical energy. We saw energy manipulation, and that has given way now to intent. Everything now is about intent. And that's really where it's at. So um, there's a really lot of good things happening, and we have to we have to expose this spiritual materialism um, and talk about it and uh, nip it in the bud. Okay, we got a few minutes left. Other questions? Come on, uh, come on, Lee, and let me know what's on that brilliant mind of yours. What do you what do you think's to coming with these energies? With you a super artist. What do you what do you think's coming with all these artists? What are you artists up to? <laughs> I could just tell you what I'm up to. I just <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's gonna get messier before it gets better. And yeah, yeah. that's what uh, it feels like. Yeah, why is that? Just, just with all this movement that's that's happening, it's an awful lot of one time, isn't it? Right. So I mean, it like it yeah. just can't help but do that. I mean, I think ultimately, yeah, like, yeah, it's a lot of moving parts. Yes, Linda Sprague. There are two other people who want to want to say something. Yeah, I, but I'm, uh, I just want to say to answer yeah. what I'm sorry. Is it Leanne? What Leanne just said. The reason I think it will get messier first is because the shadow of Aquarius is anarchy. It's egotistical anarchy. Thank you so very much. That's we exactly right. We'll still have Bannon yeah. uh, and, you know, these other people who want to be paid by the government in order to destroy the government. You know, the spiritual the anarchy. Of, spiritual yeah, it's an anarchy. 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 Yeah. And uh, it, it's going to take a lot of humanity coming together to rebel not throw the, the baby out with the bathwater. Rebel without a cause. There you right. go. Well, well the causes very... themselves, them, their self and their own egotistical thinking. Yeah. That's what their cause is. 
And well, then, the thing is that we we <laughs> tell the public what's causing us, and nothing happens. That's okay. what I mean by baby planets in the chart. It scares me. Eric, I'm sorry. Thank you, Linda. That was really good. Uh, yeah, Erica, dear. Um, when you were talking about, um, you know, people buying crystals and stuff like that, trying to take a shortcut, I was thinking about, you know, back in the Middle Ages was buying spiritual indulgences. So that's that right. Donating right. money to the Pope and the church so you could buy off a buy yourself a off a all your in heaven, yeah. yeah, it's oh, like the same that coming you. around again for our time. I mean, we gotta really start attacking how stupid we are. We really gotta attack it. Thinking that if I pray hard enough, God will let the Steelers win today. I mean, it's just unbelievable the stuff we think. Ooh, come on, Sean, say something to me. I mean, I'm 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 kind of I guess I'm the odd one in the bunch right now. Everybody seems to have a um a negative outlook. I don't know if it's because of my Pisces or something, but um. I don't I think the only reason why negative things is gonna happen is because we're looking at it from an outer level, you know, not an inner. You know, because there's certain we have help, you know, we have help internally, spiritually. You know, very it's good. just very good just certain things that we're not doing with ourselves and our bodies, you know. Well, that's a very, very good point. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Very much, yeah. very good stuff. If I'm responsible, I apologize, but I uh, I really like what you said. Keep reminding us. And mm -hmm. Linda Sprague says that we would all like to see your T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to stand up and show us your T-shirt. Oh, You're not going <laughs> to see it right, though. You're not going to see it right. Child of God, I am sanctified, no weapon formed, I am in Christ. That's good enough. Wonderful. Thank you both very much. Dr. John, you you what a great crowd we got here. And the 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 uh, astrology unplugged t-shirts are coming your way soon. Go ahead, John. You know, I'm thinking you asked me about legislation and everybody says, well, change the laws. Uh, you know, I think that if uh, lynching was legal, it would still oh. be today <laughs> lynching was legal then what it would still be going on today oh god stop it but the problem is that a lot of the people that would be doing the lynching in congress well of course they would <laughs> therefore we turn their lights out yeah they can't do much in the dark yeah, don't don't tell my lawyer friends i you know told you this <laughs> i'm telling everybody yeah we're not adding anything anymore i'm letting everybody know by God, I mean, who are we kidding? Let's uh, let's run Sean up the pole for uh, for election in the next elections. Marcia, come on! I know you got something to say. We got about ten minutes left. What's on your mind, Elke and Marcia? Hi. Hello, dear. Well, I think things are heading. Uh, to more difficult times uh, and I just think we all have to jump in more and dig in and help You're in whatever exactly right. way we can if it's financially if it's going to help in a food pantry if it's talking to somebody who's really in a lot of pain uh, emotionally whatever it is I just think we all have to start to dig in more well those are really really some good good statements you know because when you look at it People are good people, but most of us are good people. We really <laughs> are. We just have to get encouraged and get shown out front with a flag. Okay, Susan, you're up next. I just wanted to say, I think that as Aquarius moves into Pisces, we're going to see more and more of these uh, groups advancing conspiracy theories. And oh, I think yeah. they're going to get way yeah. more extreme than the magas even. 
Well, uh, that's true. I think, that's true. I think we're in for a very bumpy ride for a while on this. And that's because Eris ain't going away. That's why. She's the sleeper in all this. She's the fanatic. She's right in the middle. And what's she doing now? Pluto's separating from her. So what does that mean? It'll it'll take the Pluto bite out of her, but it also is going to take the Pluto control off of Eris and let her operate on her own. And she's one fanatical planet. So you're right. And uh, I don't know. I, I want to be like Medusa, one of those with like 15 heads and 15 hands. So I can squat all these flies down at the same time. Come on, who else? We got Elkie, I think. Yeah, so I think there's going to be a lot of stuff happening. But first, I want to say, like, you think it's only happening in America. It is not. Gotcha. In Canada, the political situation is the same. When I speak to my family in Germany, they all want to immigrate and move to the U.S. And ah. the U.S. won't let them in. And it's like... Ah. It's just nuts, you know? So um, the spiritual bypassing, Lisa Rankin, she's a doctor. She wrote a really good article about the spiritual bypassing and the victim shaming and and all that stuff that's been going on where people will just say to you, oh, well, you know, you were asking for this when you made up your chart and all that. That may be true, but to throw that in the face of a victim no, is no, no, really no. hurtful. It's no, just that, that's incorrect. Yes. Well, yeah. you're, you're an expert with medical stuff. What, what do you, I mean, this is a big deal. These two yeah. things change in signs. This is a big deal medically and with nanotechnology. What do you say? What do you see coming? What I see coming is a big problem with the toxins and the lymphatics because the lymph is the water in our body and everybody is so toxic and the whole medical institutions, it was always about drugs, 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 drugs. Well, it's gotten to a point where people's bodies are so full of, full of toxins, they cannot get rid of it. Their lymph is congested and clogged. And so it's gonna be a big problem. And then there may be another virus coming that attacks the lymph and in when Saturn conjuncts Neptune, I think it's going to be a big problem. You know, we're already starting to see here. I, in fact, I was in a meeting today about this hospital closures that they were talking about. What are, what are we going to do? Are we just going to close the doors or are we just kind of let people in and just kind of like patch them up a little bit? And I said, well, either way. There's, you're on the hook for massive liabilities because you could have prevented all this and they didn't, you know, staffing issues. Nobody wants to go to work anymore. Everything is so bad. And so hospital closures, big time. I mean, you guys have to be prepared to fix yourselves eventually. You know, I have Saturn and Pisces and I had to learn to navigate the, the whole thing on my life really. And it's going to be really hard for people that have not taken any responsibilities for their own health. I do. I'm semi-retired and I do most of my readings about two o'clock in the afternoon. And you wouldn't believe how many people I talk to. Are you going to be home two o'clock in the afternoon weekdays? They go, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's at home. Everybody's at home now. They're all Is anybody working? TikTok. They're all making money off of social media on instagram on stupid stuff and none of this is real none of it and only like you said only what is real is going to survive okay well let's let's wrap things up that was really good stuff Elke. a lot yeah. of really good ideas all you had um let's let's keep our um let's keep our heads out high and let's keep sean out in front of the pack because he's got the right idea and the right heart. And let's let's try to be models for everybody else. Because no matter what, love conquers all. And uh, it it's all a call for more love. It is. And tonight uh, is one of those nights where you have to look at things. Uh, yes, Sean has faith. He was given faith. He's a Pisces. Faith and belief. 
They got the two best gifts in the Zodiac. They got them. That's what they're called, faith and belief. I want to do your chart some night, Faith. Uh, faith. Uh, Sean, <laughs> I told you I'd get to it. But I do want to do that. Next week we have um, my friend. Uh, Clarissa. Clarissa Bergman, who's going to be talking about um, the myth, the myth of the New Age movement. And I'll tell you what, she does a lot of work with uh, um, pure, purifying the body, etc. Tantric work. And she is a smart cookie. And she's an Aquarian. And she's the one who interviewed me a, year, a couple of years ago when we did a show on well, how did Rick get where he got she was the one that interviewed me so thanks everybody go set, go have a stiff drink <laughs> on me <laughs> thanks Rick thanks yeah. everybody love you all Bye, Linda. night keep the faith love everyone. you all bye bye